If you've spent any time working with APIs, you're bound to encounter somebody whose API requires an HMAC. Anytime you run into this, it's a complete dead end and you might as well just throw out Postman because you're never going to get it working. Or maybe there's a way around that. Let's mash on that. Hi everybody and welcome to another episode of the ASP Net Monsters. In today's episode, we are going to take a look at HMAC signatures and why anybody would use them and how you can get them working in Postman. Postperson? We're going to call it Postperson from now on, I think. Uh, so let's take a step back here and take a look at what an HMAC signature is. So the idea here is that you want to avoid people taking the requests that are being sent to an API and replaying them later to recreate the circumstances of that request. So consider an example like charging a credit card. If you're going to send a request to a service that charges a credit card and somebody captures that request, it's possible that they could play that request back again and again and again and the end server will end up charging the credit card hundreds of times. That's obviously not a scenario that you want. Uh, so what you can do is you can kind of time limit that using this thing called an HMAC, which is basically just a hash of a secret value plus the timestamp. Uh, and then there's a limited window in which that can be used uh, and that stops replays from happening. Now, some APIs you will find out there require you to actually put this signature in the API. And this is a gigantic pain uh, because it requires doing cryptographic hashing using SHA or MD5 or something like that uh, as part of the request. So when you come into something like Postman here, and you want to create a request and save it off so that you can play it back later or tweak a few variables later, it's really difficult to do because the signature has changed. Now that's kind of the intent of it, um, but there are much better ways around that now. Uh, so as it turns out, TLS, which is the subsequent thing from SL, uh, SSL, has been using HMAC for years and it's built into the encryption protocol. So in most cases, except for some really narrow circumstances, you don't need to do this manual HMAC step if you're developing an API. It's much better to just rely on TLS to do that for you. Uh, you're unlikely to screw that up as much. Anytime you're dealing with cryptography or hashing or anything like that, it is much better to use a known implementation than to try and build your own out. That being said, there are certain endpoints out there that still use it. And so you're gonna have to encounter this from time to time. And up until today, I have always just looked at it and gone, well, I guess I'm out of luck. I'm not gonna really use Postman for this endpoint, Postperson for this endpoint. Uh, but today I thought I would dig into it and see if I could get it working and I had some success in doing it. So what I found was this pre-request script that exists inside of Postman. Uh, so if you drop in over here, sorry, I don't think I can zoom in on this very much. We'll do it in post-production. Uh, so we can write a bunch of JavaScript that manipulates the variables inside of Postperson and use that to uh, build an HMAC signature ourselves. So I'm going to take you through the code that I used here and uh, we'll go from there. So this particular endpoint uh, is for some parking service that I found somewhere that gives you information on plates that have been parking in a specific location. Uh, but it requires an HMAC signature and it is based on a number of parameters that come into it. Uh, so things like uh, what parking lot is it, what mode are we in, what page number, uh, when we want to start and end the search, uh, and so forth. So what we have is some variables that I have defined up here in Postperson, and then we're going to insert those into our request here. So if we take a look at our parameters here, we just kind of put in these escape codes here, and this is what's going to put those values in. 
uh, but there's some that don't actually exist uh, in our collection here. So one of those is the signature, another one is this timestamp. So these are gonna be replaced as part of our script that we sent. So the, the HMAC signature is sent here in a variable called signature. So in our script, what we do is uh, we require in a couple of libraries. Now, Postperson has support for a number of different JavaScript libraries built into it. Uh, one of them is the URL library, another one is Moment. There's also support for like Crypto, JS, and a bunch of other stuff in there too. There is some documentation on the Postperson website that I will link to down below if you wanna get involved in that. Um, but what we're gonna do is we are gonna take the URL that is being generated up here uh, so this is the, the URL from the request, and we're going to make some substitutions in it. So the first thing we're going to do is, uh, because the, the URL that we get from here is exactly this one up here, so it still has uh, the variable substitutions in it, we need to go and do those ourselves. So we're going to replace this VisiPark account with VisiPark account here from this environment variable. Uh, and we're going to make sure that we URL encode that. So if this contains any weird URL illegal characters, we're going to escape all of those out. Uh, we're going to do the same thing here for this URL, and we're going to do the same thing for the timestamp. So the timestamp actually comes from a Unix timestamp, which we're just going to ask Moment to give us. So we just do moment.unix, and that'll give us the number of seconds since Epoch, which is sometime in 1970. Uh, so then we are going to trim off the signature portion from up here uh, because we don't want to we want to use that as part of our hash it's obviously you can't hash itself uh, it's a little bit of a pulling yourself up by your shoelaces sort of problem and then the last thing we're going to do is just because there are some places in here that have some need for encoding particularly these colons in here uh, I'm just going to forcibly replace those. I could split this thing up and use URI, encode URI component for it, but this seemed like a much quicker solution. Uh, so then from that, we're going to ask the URL library here to extract the search string, which is going to be everything after the question mark here. Uh, and then we're going to trim just that question mark off of the front. So that gives us this long piece here that we want to use as part of our hashing algorithm. Uh, so at this point, we can lean on Crypto.js for this. So we're going to give it uh, this URL, and we're going to ask for a UTF-8 encoded version of this URL. And then we're going to hash that in combination with this account secret. So this is a secret passphrase here. Uh, so we're going to hash those two together using this HMAC SHA-256 algorithm. So there, there's a bunch of different versions of this out there use different hashing algorithms. Uh, then I just have this logging out to the console for now, just to help me out, making sure that it's the same. So I actually have some c -sharp code that performs this same set of actions for me so that I was aware of what the output should be. So I was just running a little bit of comparison to make sure that I was getting the right hash out of there. And it was. Uh, so then I'm just going to go and set a couple of variables here. So I'm going to set the, the signature variable to the result of what we had here, making sure to URI encode it. And then I'm going to set the timestamp as well. So there is actually a variable you can use inside of postperson, which is just a dollar sign timestamp. Uh, but I wasn't sure about what the life cycle of that was and so forth. So I felt like it would be better to, to just use my own timestamp, which is why I ended up doing that. Uh, so once I have all of this in place, it's actually going to send the request out to this server. Uh, and it takes a little time to come back. But I actually get back proper information from it. But if I go and I take out that signature parameter, then I get a, an error message here that I'm missing a signature. So I am confident that this is working. And it's going to allow me to, to update and rotate stuff inside of this call so that I can save this off and I can share it with other developers uh, without having to worry quite so much about how these HMAC signatures are calculated. Uh, so this is super useful for me because I have a bunch of other things that I'm going to go back now and update with this same sort of script. Uh, everybody has their own little implementations of HMAC, so you do still need to go and read the documentation. You can't just copy and paste what I have here.
Uh, but this is the way to do it inside of Postman. Seems to work great. And I'm super happy about it because it unlocks Postman, Postperson as a tool for me again, even when I'm dealing with these sites that use these antiquated HMAC solutions. Um, so I hope everybody learned something today. I know I did. So remember to like, comment, and share, and we'll see everybody on next week's episode. Bye.